Welcome everybody. Um, thank you very much for uh, joining us um, this evening. Um, my name's Phil. Um, and for those that don't know, um, we also are very lucky to have Saeed Rashid with us today as our special guest and co-host there. Um, and ho hopefully we're both sort of front and centre in, in, in your screen. Um, if I can just run through um, a, a couple of bits of uh, Zoom etiquette is that um, uh, because I have pressed the button, um, this is being recorded. Um, so if you don't want your video to appear um, uh, on a recording, um, then please just um, turn your video off. Um, um, because we have quite a few people on the call, oh, here we go, I'll just let some more in. Um, then um, if I could ask for everybody to be muted um, uh, uh, as sort of the default state um, so that um, everybody can hear the presenters. Um, in terms of questions, um, if you want to ask a question as we go through, um, so it's more than happy to um, answer questions so you can just unmute yourself and chip in if it's relevant to um, sort of the specific part of the, um, of the talk. Um, otherwise, we also have a chat function. Um, so um, you are welcome to um, put questions on the chat um, and we'll do our best to answer them at the end. Um, now, some of you um, who, um, filled in uh, the form on the Dive Worldwide website, um, may have asked a question um, on that. Um, we had a bit of an IT wobble, for, unfortunately, and <laughs> we don't have those questions. Um, so if anybody asked a question um, when they were filling out the, the application form on the Dive Worldwide website, um, if you could just pop your question on chat or ask it during the call and we'll do our very best uh, to answer all the questions. Okay. Um, so, um, it's so nice to be able to bring so many people together here using technology um, to um, talk about diving and enjoy an experience together despite the, the lockdown we're in at the moment. Um, what we're looking to do today is transport you to uh, Sulawesi um, in uh, central Indonesia, um, which is one of my favorite places. It's a magical island um, and um, with a focus on uh, underwater photography because um, Saeed is running a trip there um, in late June, early July called Muck and Magic to um, the Banakan and Lembe area. Um, so the idea is to um, give you a flavour of that area um, and of what will happen on that, on that trip um, and hopefully entertain you a little bit along the way. Um, Sulawesi is an island that is absolutely fascinating before we even get to the, to the diving. Um, it's got, um, geologically, it's, it's, it's fascinating. Um, it's an extraordinary shape with a central mountainous area and all these peninsulas coming off it. Um, it's got a fantastic culture um, as well, um, beautiful nature. Um, you may have read in the news recently that um, they found the world's oldest uh, human cave art in Southwest Sulawesi recently. Um, so it, it's a really, really fascinating place. Um, but um, of course, for us, one of the most fascinating things about it is the diving. Um, so that's what we're going to talk about. Um, before we hand over to um, Saeed, um, uh, we're going to, with a little bit of luck, um, take you over to Sulawesi and to Lembe to get you in the mood. Um, we've got a little video shot the other day um, from Ben, who is the um, resident photo pro at, uh, at Dive into Lembe, um, where uh, he's got a little message for us. Um, and also um, shares uh, some photos and videos from a recent dive. Hello, my Hello. name is Ben Sarinda. I'm guest and relation manager and also a photo pro at Technical Lembe. I'm looking forward to welcome you in this summer for Sid Prasit Mark and Magic Trip to Lembe Strait. As we all know that 2020 has been a crazy year of COVID-19 and I'm glad to inform you that here at David Dulembe, there is no one affected by the virus. And also, it's a great news that the Indonesian government is starting the uh, uh, vaccination. <coughs> so, what I would like to do today is I want to make a, a, a slideshow, a couple of photos or video. It's just about Lembe taste. So, enjoy. <laughs>
All right, so I hope that um, helps uh, set the scene and transport everybody from their, from their living rooms and their kitchen tables into Indonesia. Um, um, without further ado, um, I think I will hand over to you, Saeed, uh, to um, regale us with tales of Indonesia and show us some fabulous photos and give us the lowdown on what will be happening um, uh, in June and July this year. No worries. <clears throat> There's a few people just still coming in. Yeah, I've, I've, I've let a couple in. It's nice seeing uh, loads of people that I know here and also loads of people I don't know. Um, so hello and uh, welcome uh, this evening. Um, isn't it mad when we have nothing to do, we come and log in and listen to the most inane people, me, rabbit on about a load of stuff and probably try and give you a heavy sales at the end of it. Uh, so make sure you stay on for that bit, yeah? It's not just looking or looking at lovely, pretty pictures. There is a reason um, why I'm here this evening. And the reason why I'm here this evening is because I, <clears throat> you know, with God willing and, and everything is okay, I do have a trip th at the end of June and beginning of July. But we'll kind of talk about that in more detail as, as we go along. So let me just share my screen. I use Zoom every single day, but as soon as it's really important, I've lost everything. There we go. <clears throat> so let's let's just start this up. Okay, so I said I have a trip running there from the 26th of June to the 10th of July. Now it's a two-center trip, um, staying first at Tasik Ria um, to explore the delights of um, Bunakan National Park. Um, I think there's a lot of people here that have probably been to Tasik. It's, um, oh, why is that not working? There we go. Um, last time I was there, I think two years ago, I think there's a couple of people on the call here that were with me. Uh, we had beautiful weather the whole time we were there. Um, it was absolutely gorgeous. So you can see this is Tassik. Um, it has a, it has a man-made harbour, um, which is used both for the resort and for some local fishermen. Um, just at the end of that jetty there, the little um, hut, that's the bar. OK, um, so when we go for our evening bintangs, that's where you'll be sitting. And the little thing just by the um, just shooting off from that by the pine trees um, is generally the, the outdoor restaurant where most of the meals will be, um, especially breakfast. Um, there is a restaurant within the resort itself, but that's where most things are. And just show you another eye view. Um, what um, Tasek does have is the most amazing swimming pool. And I think for a long time, it was the biggest swimming pool um, in, in Sulawesi for a long, long time. Um, and it is a real star of the, of the resort. Um, but that's enough. That's the only bit of the resort I'm going to talk, talk about. Uh, why is that not working? There we go. You're here and you want to know about the diving. Well, the re reason why, you know, we're doing a two centre because they're, they're so different. The areas are completely different from each other. Um, you've got the Bunakan National Park and then over the other side you've got the world famous Lembe. So I'll talk about Lembe um, in a moment but first of all let's look at the stuff that we can dive from Tasik Ria. So <clears throat> here's Tasik Ria down the bottom here and the Bunakan National Park is mainly these islands up the top although there is an odd quirk and someone here might be able to correct me and I did ask somebody on the line earlier but she forgot the name of the the um, a uh, dive site. To the south of Tasik, there is another dive site which is still part of the Bunakan National Park, um, oddly, and I'll, I'll come and talk about that as we go on. But you can see there's a, a lot of dive sites you can get to um, from, from Tasik itself. Um, looking closer at Bunakan, and this is where uh, what normally happens for the diving is you'll go out for um, for two to three dives, okay, from the resort. So what generally happens is we steam up to uh, the islands, to Bunakan Island, um, and tend to do some, to do um, a couple dives around there. And then on the way back, um, we will often do one of these other dives, maybe along the coastline or somewhere, just so we're closer back to the resort. So it's easier when we finish the diving, you don't have to sit on the boat um, for a couple of hours waiting for us to go back. Um, but the boats, just, just to uh, let you know if you haven't been on the boats, the boats are a nice size. Um, they always prepare and cook um, a hot lunch on the boats. 
um, which is amazing. Um, they, they tend to always have uh, uh, pissing goreng, which is the, if anyone's never had it, it's the deep fried um, banana. They're not very sweet bananas, a um, bit like plantain, but not as, not as hard as plantain. And you normally have those with a chili dip. And they are my absolute nemesis. I will go through bowls of those. Um, they're, they're really, really dangerous, but amazing to have. Um, so just looking um, at Bunaka National Park. Now I can't see you all at the moment, so I can't see um, ask you a question and get a response from you. But I'm gonna take it that not everybody has been to Bunakan. Um, so I'm gonna give you the kind of lowdown as we go along. So Bunakan National Park mainly is made up here. You can see, let me just move, I've got a little, uh, let's move you guys out of the way slightly. There we go. Uh, it's made up here with these five islands. And these are the main islands of Bunakan National Park. Most of the diving, not all of it, is, um, is between um, uh, Manala Dua Tua and Bunakan Island itself. There is some diving and some sites around uh, Saladin as well, but that's where most of the sites that we will be diving are. And you can see almost by the topography from this drone shot um, that the sites are walls, okay? So it is wall diving. Um, the water here is incredibly deep, which means the upwellings um, can be really strong. Um, also, the reef tops themselves are incredibly big. So at low tide, you do tend to get quite a lot of current moving. So Bunakan is also very famous for its uh, moving currents, and no one seems to know which way they go, at what time of day they go. Um, but the boats are really good. The boats, I, don't, I have no idea how they do it. But the boats, even when you get a split group, the boats will follow bubbles and know exactly where everybody's coming up. Um, I would actually hate to be a boat captain and be doing all that kind of stuff. Um, but that's that's the main sites where we're going to be diving uh, for most of the time. Oh, there's, there's a little shot. So the Benakan Island itself, you can go on that. Um, there are resorts on there as well. Um, we might see if we can um, offload a jetty one day and have a wander around the island because it's quite nice. The village itself, um, just going back to that one, you can see the main village. That's a really nice village just to just walk around a little bit. So as I was saying, the, the diving itself is mainly wall diving. There are incredible gogonias there. Okay, some of the biggest gogonias I've seen um, outside of Komodo National Park. Um, they are absolutely beautiful. And they're, they're fantastic for your photography. So we can spend ages, uh, these gogonias uh, at the surface all the way down to your maximum depth. So you can go to any depth you want and find a gogonia to actually, um, for your photography. And of course, that's kind of why we come to this absolute pristine um, area for diving. The walls themselves are rich in uh, a lot of marine life. So here we have the clouds of um, red toothed triggerfish. Um, they appear in their absolute thousands. Um, they are actually incredibly hard to photograph. Um, to get a picture of these, uh, you see them, you think, oh, I can easily grab a picture. And this is probably the best I can get to show the, the clouds of them, but it does not at all. Um, illustrate what they're really like. You have to be in the middle of them to really see what these clouds of um, triggerfish are like. And those of you that have been there will know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, but of course, one of the main reasons um, we go there all the time and one of the biggest stars of the Bunakan National Park are the turtles. Um, now it's mainly um, green turtles and hawksbills. Um, but the turtles, there are literally thousands of them. Um, you'll find them as you go along, so that they'll find themselves a nice little um, outcrop or a little uh, place to go and sleep and go and rest. Um, and you'll see them all over. So you'll see them uh, as you come across them. You can see here, there's a little nook in there. And what you'll tend to see, which is absolutely brilliant, is these guys have been using the same hangouts for years and years and years. And they, they, 
they they make grooves into the coral itself and you can see smooth areas um, where a, where a, uh, a turtle once was okay uh, but there I said they're literally they're everywhere so they come they're there uh, actually in that picture are three turtles I can't point to them on this screen here but you can see there's one just at the back there uh, the one at the top looks superimposed but he's not trust me the most turtles I ever got in one shot uh, was five um, and there's just they're just all over. So they're at eye level. You can see here they often find some of these amazingly big barrel sponges to go and nestle in and go and relax in here. And they're really they're used to divers. So you can get um, relatively close to these guys. Um, often um, they will, uh, if you wake them up, they will just slowly swim off onto the blue. Um, snorkelers, by the way, have an amazing delight here. Um, my partner Lou still thinks Bunaka National Park is some of the best diving she has ever done in the entire world. Because um, that surface level is absolutely gorgeous. You've got sea snakes, you've got the turtles that us as divers are constantly disturbing. And they're coming up to the surface and they're literally, you can be snorkeling away and you'll have a turtle um, just surface right next to you. And um, they're an incredible thing. Uh, look below, you'll see a turtle going past you. And the beautiful thing, when you've got so many of the same creature, you get to experiment with your photography. Um, so if I go back to that, that shot there, so that's a very straightforward wide angle shot. But I had a turtle swimming under me and I thought, well, I've got loads of pictures of turtles swimming under me. So I'm gonna try slow exposure. Okay, so I slow my shutter speed down. Um, and just work with my flashes to freeze the movement while I'm swimming along with the turtle. So there I'm probably working on a quarter of a second shutter speed, something like that, to try and get that effect. And that's what I said is really beautiful about this area or any area where you get the same creature and it allows you to really experiment with your photography. Um, you also get the delights on nice calm days to be able to look up and see those turtles that we may have um, disturbed or those that have gone up for a breath sitting above you. So this effect here, if anyone knows what it's called, this is um, a snail's window. It's an effect that we you don't see this with your naked eye. We can only see this if you're using um, a fisheye lens. So not even a, um, a wide angle lens. It needs to be a fisheye lens. And then at about a depth of 15 meters or so, you can point your camera directly up and ideally you don't want the middle of the day because you've got the sun coming down and burning it all out. And then you can get this amazing kind of globe type picture. And the calmer the weather, the crisper that line of between the dark and, and the light. So that's something else we can, we can experiment with. You see the turtles swimming into the blue. So this is a very normal scene of those turtles swimming um, away from you. And it is, it is insane. It's, um, not every site is like this. You will, most sites have a lot of turtles. Normally the, the, the sites themselves in front of the village, and I think the site is actually called Front of Village um, in Bunakan, has the most turtles. And I think, uh, I think Sharon, who's on this call with me, I think when we went, I, we saw the most turtles I've ever seen on one dive, which I think we lost count about 34. Um, so that's that's a hell of a lot of turtles and you know we lost count at that so we saw more um, not every dive is like that quite often you'll see a dozen or more but um, that's quite a normal they sit on top of the reef top so here you can see this is this is a very typical shot um, along the reef top at um, at high water so you can see the reefs themselves are still very healthy and there's still a lot of color up here in the reefs but it's not all about the turtles. Of course, there's many other things on there. Um, we have the giant frogfish. Um, this guy has pretty much been there ever since I've been diving there. Um, I swear it's the same fish. So um, over 10 years, and I swear he stays in the same spot as well um, because the dive guides can take you directly to him every single time. Um, there's also, there is macro. So, if you want to, uh, if you're bored with all the magnificent um, uh, vistas, 
Um, you can go and take macro. So there's all the things. So there's all the things that you would probably see over in Lembe here. Okay, they do exist. Okay, so they're worth looking for. Um, for those rust junkie, um, junkies here, there is a wreck. I've only dived it a couple of times because I am, I'm not that interested in the wreck, but there is a wreck that you can dive. Um, and I wanted to put this relatively um, average picture of this Puntoy um, seahorse in here for you because um, Bunakan's Walls was the first place I ever saw a pygmy seahorse. And the pygmy seahorse I saw was the world's smallest one, which is this Pintoy. Um, and if anyone has ever seen one, they will realize how small they are. And I spent half an hour trying to get a photograph of this guy who is probably five millimeters tall um, in a raging current while I'm trying to fin while I used up all my air. Uh, but I was so excited that I saw this guy um, I just wanted to put that in there. So everything is there for you, from, from the huge turtles to the massive vistas to the gogonias um, to the, the tiniest um, pygmy seahorses. And yes, we do have sharks, okay? So there are many places, many of the hangouts, some of the places where um, the, the turtles might be that you will often see these guys in there sleeping. Um, the most I've seen is I think is six rammed in a hole together. Um, they do get larger things, okay, in the blue. Um, so uh, they will get larger sharks in the blue, big tuna, those big pelagics. It is also known for them to have orca there. Um, there are some pictures and some video of people in the water with the orca um, um, cruising past um, Bunakan. I'm not... Um, I'm not sure what time of year that generally is, but it's normally when the water's a little bit colder. Maybe someone knows more than I do here and can just put it in the, in the chat. Um, so it's not all about Bunakan, okay? Um, do you remember I said to you there's um, the site to the south, um, which is also part of National Park? So maybe I lied a bit there, so it is still all about Bunakan. But if we, if we sail slightly further south of the resort, there were lots of other um, dive sites, as well as the kind of the mucky ones closer to um, between um, the islands of Bunakan and the resort. But I'm not going to talk about those too much because we're going to talk about muck when we go over to Lembe. So um, just know that it is possible and it is, it is quite good here. So coming down south, there are amazing reefs as well. These aren't walls. So these are, these are gentle, shallow reefs. And there's a story that the, um, one of the managers at, at um, TASIC tells me that about 10 years ago, they had a South African, a famous South African um, uh, a marine biologist um, visit them. And um, he visited this site. Now I, I completely and utterly forget the name of it. This is what I was trying to find out earlier. And he said that of all the sites that he has ever dived in the world, this site has the fifth highest biodiversity for bony fish that he has ever seen. Um, so that's something that's absolutely incredible. And um, from my last visit, yeah, there was there was some fish there that I have never seen before. Um, and if I was if I had some time, I would dive here every single day just to catalogue all the different fish. Uh, but there's everything we can get here. So um, some of the um, the usual suspects, these guys. Um, these striped catfish that swim around like mercury on the seabed. Uh, absolutely incredible to see. Um, and when they appear, you can see all the photographers suddenly go, oh, and they kind of dart over to them. And the beauty about these guys is they stay around for ages. So we can take our turn and, and kind of slowly get our photographs we want and, and then move on um, to our next subject. And what's really nice about um, some of these areas is because they're shallow, especially here, apart from the the, Nash, the the islands, is you really can take your time. And as a photographer, um, you can go off uh, a little bit more on your own. You've got a lot more independence. So you can spend time taking your photographs, experimenting, trying new things, trying out new kit. Um, and I think we did a, a couple of days at this reef and I was even going down with one lens realizing that wasn't quite right for me and then 
saying, right, I'm surfacing, I'm going to change my kit on the boat, get back in the water with the right setup, and, it, and the boat's not moving anywhere. So you're always going from the boat to the reef and back to the boat. So you have all of this kind of, it's nice, easy, relaxed diving. Diving this reef, this reef really remind me of uh, the Egyptian dives off liverboards, you know, when you just moor up somewhere and it says, all right, in you go, and then you can just come back in your own time. Um, I was amazed by all the cleaning stations at the reefs. Um, and one of my favorite hobbies is just to sit at the cleaning station. So here you can see this Moorish Idol here um, um, being cleaned. And I, I will spend um, 90 minutes just sitting on one cleaning station um, with a nice long lens waiting for the fish to come in to be cleaned. And you can get some amazing photographic opportunities um, by kind of doing that. Um, so don't chase the fish around wait for the fish to come to you and what's the best place to sit and wait for the fish at a cleaning station that's somewhere they want to be um, and you can quite see you quite often see that the fish will get very used to you so first of all you'll find a cleaning station and you'll sit there and the fish will disappear a little bit but if you wait five minutes and just bide your time singing to yourself I'm, I like to give myself a little singing lesson under the water um, those fish will slowly come back and then within 10-15 minutes you've got them queued up you've got the lines of fish waiting to come in and if you're lucky um, I've only had it a couple of times you'll get maybe turtles coming into the cleaning station as well um, but going back to Tassock Tassock is just uh, it's a slight it is a slightly older resort there's lots of new resorts that have opened up but it still has the pedigree there. It's still in a really nice position to be able to offer you uh, the best of both worlds. So you've got the islands of Bunakan, the southern areas of Bunakan National Park, and then all of the muck in there as well. Also, it is the best place I have ever been for sunsets. Um, it really is absolutely brilliant. Um, and we'll always get you back at the, at the bar, as I said, in time for your evening bing tang. OK, so sitting at that nice, uh, that nice uh, jetty bar, uh, nice big bottles of ice cold bintang, um, perfect in the evening. So just talking about how I structure um, the kind of day. If we're out all day on a boat, it can be quite hard to do um, lots of formal um, uh, photography talks here at Tassock. Um, what I tend to do is kind of talk to people much more on a one-to-one -one basis when we're on the boat. Um, in fact, we're all a family. We're all friends on those on those boats. So we actually learn more by learning off each other. Um, but what I will do, if there are lots of new people um, with us, we'll do some early morning short talks. So I'm not making you get up at a ridiculous time in the morning. We'll do kind of short um, 15, 20 minute talks in the morning, maybe while you're having breakfast um, to get you ready um, for those dives of that day um, but it tends to work really well here where we're just on the boat all day and we can just kind of get on with the job of taking nice pictures the one thing I will say about Tassic before I go on to talk about diving to Lembe um, it has one of the best spas I've been to a long time and last time I was there on my last day I had an amazing spa which included a milk bath I have never had this in all my life Here's my pretty, pretty legs. Uh, it was the weirdest experience of my entire life, uh, sitting in a bath of milk. But it does work. It's brilliant. So if you go, have the milk bath spa, OK? Sorry for showing me pictures of my legs. <clears throat> Actually, this might be a nice little bit just to pause. Uh, Phil, have any questions come in about um, Tassic that I can answer while we're going? Uh, we've got none on the chat, but maybe if people have got some questions on, on that part of the talk, they can uh, unmute themselves and, and ask now. Yeah, no problem. Anyone? No, excellent. Either okay, they've we've, all got, gone... we've got one that is not specific to Gunaka, but it's, it's possibly a bit more relevant from a, a, a Jay a Stutchbury um, who gave the question in, in, in advance. Um, so... Um, uh, they would like to know about the time of day and how it affects the species that can be seen um, and any recommendations for the time of day with respect to the lighting for, for photography. Uh, okay, we'll talk about species to start with. I'm not a marine biologist, but um, through my experience, obviously, 
when we go night diving, we see a completely different um, set of species um, to those in the day. But I've not really seen, unless you've got Pacific sites in mind, um, uh, morning dive to afternoon dive, different species coming out. Um, what we do tend to like to do sometimes is do the kind of uh, shift change dive where you'll go and dive just before sunset. So you can see all the daytime fish disappearing off and then all the nighttime fish coming back. Sometimes you get the big school, um, schools of fish kind of a bit like, you know, we get starling murmurations late in the evening. You sometimes get things like that with fish where they come and gather in huge schools and then dart into the reefs at the night to, to hide away. And as for the question about your photography um, and the light, the same as land. So um, we talk about the golden hour on land for our photography is exactly the same underwater, but that's for wide angle photography. Um, so the ideal would be getting in the water just as the sun is coming up in the morning and then getting in the water just before the sun's going down. And then you get the, the amazing specular light um, coming through, you know, all those lovely sunbeams coming through the water. Um, it can look absolutely beautiful. The problem with some of those timings is they don't often fit in with the resorts um, schedule. Um, we will try and get some of those times a day if we can, um, especially in the, some of the, the closer, um, the wide angle sites closer to Tassic Rear, uh, especially some of the evening sites. Um, but to get ourselves um, ready and um, out for, uh, as the sun's coming up, that's generally um, livable territory, okay, that you want to go through. So hopefully that's answered your question. Thank you very much. No worries. Um, okay, so let's, let's skip over, um, and I should have had a slide in here for those people that don't know um, uh, where um, Lembe Resort, or Lembe is, sorry. I've, um, I've, got, a, I've got a map later, so we'll, we'll, okay, we'll probably, cover that, don't worry. <laughs> okay, excellent. So what we've done here, we were diving before on the western side of the northern part of Sulawesi. Um, we've jumped in the car, we've had our, our week, um, and hopefully, Phil, you'll talk about this they don't have to do a week at each they can do they can do what they want yeah they can come for five days one five days another or miss out one resort completely if they want to um so we've jumped in the car and we've driven um over to the other side of the island it's it's not a massive drive and actually they've just put in i've just seen photos and videos um a new bypass and a new motorway directly from um uh, monado all the way, well, pretty much all the way to kind of um, Lembe um, and the areas around here. Um, so the, the journey should be even quicker. Um, Phil, do you know how long the journey is now? Do, have they said, have you seen anything about the new road? Um, in my head, it's, it's, it's 90 minutes. I, I remember chatting about it when I went to Lembe a, a year or so ago, but they hadn't finished the road then. Um, but yeah, I mean, hopefully they've got it down to an, an hour. Either, either way, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's not a great... Uh, uh, no, it's, find, is it? no, it's not. And, um, and what's quite good is, is um, what they do is that you can pretty much leave your kit set up in the boxes, um, all in the boxes that you'll use. And they literally just transfer the boxes to the new resort. OK, um, so you don't have to pack all your gear away um, and get it all back out again. Um, the guys will look after all of that for you. It makes your life so much easier. Um, so let's talk about dive into Lembe. So, so here is dive into Lembe. Um, it's the resort down here in the bottom left hand corner. It's right at the mouth, the northern mouth of the Straits, uh, which has some, some real benefits to it. So the water here is generally a little bit cleaner. Um, so it's generally a little bit clearer. Um, if anyone hasn't dived in Lembe before, be ready. Okay, it's the visibility is not fantastic. Um, and sometimes it's like diving in the UK on a good day. Um, but the, it draws me back like an absolute magnet because it's the sea life that's there, not the visibility. And when we're diving here, we are generally, not all the time, we're generally doing macro and super macro photography. Um, so here we can see, here's a drone shot. Um, I've tried to, I tried to photograph as much as I can of the strait. So you can see that's dive into Lembe there on the right hand side. And you can see that that's where the open water is. Um, I didn't get all the way around to the side, but this is most of the length of the strait. So down on the left hand side, 
side, um, there is the kind of um, town and the port of Lembe. Um, so down there is, is probably the muckier side of Lembe and um, going over to the right, this is the kind of cleaner side of the strait. So we're in a nice, we're in a nice lovely position there, okay, for your diving. Um, hopefully this video will play. Um, I had the, the pleasure of being there last year, um, um, just before the new crazy start, the new crazy time started. I had, um, I had a couple of days here at, um, uh, before I went on to another resort. So I made a few videos. Um, this may or may not play very well. I have tried to do your thing that you said, Roger. So let's just have a look. Uh, if it doesn't play very well, I've got a few more videos. I'm going to put them on a YouTube link and Phil will send them all out to you. Um, so, this is, so this is just to show you a little bit of um, Dive Into Lembe. Okay, so here we have, this is Dive Into Lembe. Uh, it's a nice small little resort. Um, and you can see here where I just was, um, there is the house reef and there's the boats that uh, take you out. I'm just walking down to the dive centre now. Um, so that right there is the world famous hairball. So I did a dive this morning um, straight away to hairy crawfish, um, seahorses, um, noonies, loads of stuff out there this morning. Uh, just come up here. So here we've got the the getting ready area for your diving and then we've got we'll see some pools there more cleaning places here for your cameras and we also have a really nice camera room so the camera room is up here just climbing up through to show you there's lots of space for us here in the camera room uh, apparently this is just getting a, a revamp as well so you can see there's tons of space for all our camera gear in there uh, and then we have the bar and restaurant area, the dangerous bar here. Wave to everybody. There we go. So we've got a huge amount of space here for everybody. Nice area for presentations and all our chats and post diving day bin tang. And then I'll take you up and just show you the pool area. So it's all green and leafy and lovely. There's loads of shade for us. For those that don't want to sit in the sun all the time. So we've got a lovely pool here with a nice outlook. Look at that, it's beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. And here are the rooms as well. So I'll just cut this and I'll just make another video and show you around a couple of the rooms. So there we go. I made a, I said I made a few videos just to kind of help you guys because it's always hard when you you haven't been somewhere and you want to really know what it's like and and normally the pictures look very polished and everything else and you're not quite sure. So I've got a kind of um, there we go. Sai the man on man on location um, videos, but I'll chuck those up and. Um, Phil can send a, 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 YouTube, a YouTube link to everybody. So that's the resort. Um, it is a nice, it's a much smaller resort than Tassik. Tassik is, is a larger resort, um, but it's a much smaller resort. Um, I forget how many rooms um, Phil can, can uh, jump I'll, in. And I'll cover that, yeah, I've got that. Yeah. Um, but really, you don't want to hear about the resort for me. You can, Phil can tell you about that. He's been there as well. Um, we want to know about the diving. Um, well, how's it, Lembe? It's just, as I said to you, it, it pulls on my heartstrings. Um, Lembe is the most incredible place for photography I have ever been in my entire life. Um, it's the most um, productive area for photography I have ever been in my entire life. Um, you come back from a, a week in Lembe and you've got more usable pictures than in, um, than in a whole year's worth of diving in the Red Sea. OK, um, it really is the most productive place I've ever been in my life. And as I said to you, um, the pictures I'm, I'm going to use um, here are from my last day last year. So virtually all of these are from um, when I was there. Um, as I said to you, I, I jumped in the water at um, Hairball, which is just next to their house reef, which you can you can dive in off the shore um, to it. And the first thing I saw and the first thing I photographed was this hairy frogfish. 
Um, so he was right there. He was right there in, in five meters, no, four or five meters of water. Uh, it was a completely still day um, and it was absolutely perfect. And I could have spent ages with him um, photographing him. But it's not just that one. Um, we come across more. So um, the dive guide, like they like to pull you in, like to show you more things. And the beautiful thing about this is the dive guides are very used to photographers. So it's the dive guide that you are, is your buddy and is the guy that is looking after you. So as photographers, we are often blamed for um, ignoring our buddies, but our dive guides are constantly watching out. They're constantly finding us new subjects um, and they're constantly looking after our welfare. Um, quite often, our sea dive guides will put down um, two guests or three guests um, in a triangle and literally manage those subjects. So they'll put one person on a hairy frogfish, one person on um, a um, um, seahorse, one person on a cuttlefish, and they will look to when that person is finished photographing and then move you on the next one and literally have a merry-go-round of you photographing different subjects. And half the time you don't know that you're, you're the person you're diving with was actually diving and um, photographing something else next to you because the, the dive guys are so good at spotting these things um, and looking after your welfare. So I said, I went down and found this guy straight away um, um, and then moved on a little bit and found this other guy here. Um, so um, this was on, uh, this was on the same, same reef, but actually um, the, this is actually the next day because this, no, this is actually the next dive because this was wide angle on this guy. And here we got another um, hairy frogfish. So you can see there's tons of them. They're just all there. And the frogfish, there's, they're everywhere. So everywhere you go from the smallest frogfish, and that's a giant frogfish there, to the biggest frogfish. If frogfish are your thing, they've got hundreds of them and you've got them all over the place. Um, so you can see that you can you know, go down and even one subject. So here we've got one kind of frogfish. We've got painted frogfish here. We've got giant frogfish. We've got, uh, I can't remember all the names, warty frogfish. Um, they're kind of all over the place. Um, and if, if frogfish or nudibranchs is your thing, the dive guards will look out for that sort of thing for you. And they will find that one kind of subject for you. Um, I went to Lembe, um, Oh, about four years ago, and I went with a couple. Um, one was mad nut for frogfish, and one was a mad nut for nudibranchs. Uh, and they went diving together all the time, and every time they came up, one just saw uh, frogfish all the time, and the other one just saw nudibranchs all the time, because they told the dive guide what they liked to see. And they never saw what the other one saw, because the dive guide always put them on the subject they wanted to see. And that's the absolutely beautiful thing about it. Um, so just showing you some of the topography of what Lembe is like, it is black sand, okay? So please don't come here and expect uh, beautiful white sand um, because you just won't get it. There is a white sand beach in Lembe, um, but I've never been there. Um, you do get patches of white sand, but normally it's this dark black uh, volcanic sand. And I've got, um, or I used to have a uh, lens attachment on my camera that was magnetic. Um, and I'd always come off every single dive and have to wipe off all of the iron particulates that have been collected on the magnet because all of this is, is very, very rich in iron ore. Okay, so that's quite a lot in there. But the topography is mainly black sand. And these are those, um, as I said, those striped frogfish, are, um, not frogfish, those catfish I was talking about. But it's not just boring. Boring. It's not just uh, colourless. So here we've got, you know, there is some great colour down there as well. Um, but the subjects are rich and diverse. So here we've got a little moray um, poking out of his little coconut he's found for a home. Um, we've got the carpet anemones um, with these. Probably if these saddleback clownfish were the size of um, a cat even, none of us would ever get in the water because they are the most vicious creature in the ocean. Um, and anyone that's photographed them will know they will have cuts and bites on their knuckles from these guys trying to bite you. They are absolutely vicious. Uh, coconut octopus uh, here hiding within his bottle. You'll see they'll always have a little, a little shell to kind of hide into. 
Um, you'll also on these kind of mucky sites as well have um, hundreds of different um, seahorses. So it allows you to spend time photographing them in different ways. So if you've never seen a seahorse before, you've never photographed one, you can come in here and you can photograph them front on from the side, maybe try some backlighting as well. Maybe like I did for that turtle, try some slow shutter work with these seahorses. You know, quite often you see a seahorse and you're so, you just want to get a picture of a seahorse because you haven't seen one in years. But there's hundreds of them here, okay? They're all over the place, so you can just find those. Another resident that you see all of the time are these tiny little um, yellow gobies and they tend to live inside rocks as their natural habitat, but bottles, people throw down bottles constantly and the rubbish is immense. You'll find these little gobies inside these bottles and they make incredible photographs um, to be able to take. As I said, it's not always the gobies, sometimes it's the octopus as well inside um, these bottles, or sometimes it's both of them together. Um, sometimes you're lucky enough to see both of them. Um, in fact, actually, this is a very small octopus, um, but very soon these gobies will disappear because that octopus will have them for his lunch. Um, but at the moment, they're still, he's still small enough not to bother with them. Um, as I said, nudibranchs, hundreds and hundreds of nudibranchs, if not thousands of nudibranchs. Nudibranchs aren't normally my cup of tea, but there are so many here that you can photograph. How many nudibranchs do you see in that, that picture? Can you see the big guy that was laying these eggs? The, the orange thing is the eggs. And this little flabellina is actually going through as this larger nudibranch is laying the eggs, eating the eggs. So here we have, um, you know, the whole entire circle of life just in one photograph. To the smallest nudibranchs, you can see the grains of sand there. You can see how small this guy is, absolutely tiny. Um, and I said, there are, there are so many species in there that it's just, you know, you can't describe how many they are. And it's not just, you know, we've, we've seen frogfish, we've seen nudibranchs, uh, we've seen a few octopus, but it's not just those guys. There are so many species of, um, of animal, of marine animal in Lembe that I could do a three hour talk talking about all of these different species. Um, but the best way to do it is just go and see them, okay? If there's a critter that you've ever wanted to see, it will be in Lembe, okay? It will be there. And the dive guys, uh, they will never say the guarantee, but do you know what? They will guarantee, they will, they will show you the creature that you want to see. Unless of course it's a basking shark or something which is in the wrong seas. But the real beauty about somewhere like Lembe is the ability to sit and relax and take your time photographing your subject. So you can find your little um, frogfish down here and you can spend 20 minutes, 25 minutes, 30 minutes photographing, creating and crafting the best picture that you've ever taken. And no one will get angry with you. No one will get annoyed with you because there are loads more subjects for other people to go and photograph. So it's an absolute amazing place to be. But do be careful. You don't wanna relax on the sand too much. Uh, because these guys do live in the sand. Obviously, they come out at night, but if anyone's ever seen one of these, uh, a nighttime dwelling bobbit worm. Um, so these guys can be up to three meters long um, and they're something of nightmares. So there's something from the, the film Tre um, Tremors. Um, I, look, I've got, tons, I've got tons more I could talk about, um, but I don't have time. But I just do want to talk about one last thing for, with you here is the possibility of doing the, the phenomenon that, that's uh, sweeping the world, which is um, black water diving, okay? We have the ability at um, Dive Into Lembe, although it is a supplement, we will have to pay extra for it, to do some black water diving. But the black water diving they do is something called bonfire diving. Um, and I won't go into the technicalities of it, but in essence, you get to see, you go out at night, and you get to see some of the weirdest creatures. You're not on the reef itself, you're above the reef, you're in the water column, and you get to see the largest migration um, of animals on the planet. So all those animals that come from deep water, and it's normal, normally juvenile species, coming from the deep water and coming up to the shallows to feed. So here we've got a peacock um, um, flatfish. The name is completely lost on me. Uh, here we've got some kind of larva shrimp. 
Uh, and we've got loads of different things. So here, um, the one on the left is a jewel fish. This is, I thought it was a moray. It's not it's a jewel fish, it's a deep water fish um, that you would never ever see anywhere else unless you did something like a black water dive. Um, and we will, as long as there's a take up for it, we will endeavor to do several of these dives because they are like crack cocaine. Once you've done one, you wanna keep doing more and more and more because it tests your photography. It's a brand new thing that um, you have to set your camera up in a completely different way and take pictures in a completely different way. And my first time I went to do it, I got one usable picture and the rest were all backscatter and awful. Um, but look, I, I haven't got all night. In fact, I, I've used loads of Phil's time here. Um, so I need to kind of wrap up there, I'm afraid. Um, those that do want more information, Phil can send my details off to you. Uh, but there's my email address. Feel free to email me. Find me on social media. I am a bit of a social media whore. Um, so I am all over the place um, in there. Um, but um, I'm going to hand you over to Phil. Um, and maybe, that, or unless there are actually a few questions for me. So let's just close that down. Um, flounder. Thank you, Kirsty. Thank you for that. Uh, yes, Peacock Flounder. Completely forgot the name for it. Um, so, were there any questions? No. No. I'm, no. I'm hoping that oh, means you've done it. Oh, there we go. Oh, okay. yes. Hello. How, how did you backlight the uh, the gobies in the uh, bottle? Okay, let me just take you back to that shot really, really quickly. Um, sorry if I am overrunning. Um, I'm probably oh, no problem. I'm sorry if I am overrunning. So let's just go back to that shot. Um, so you were talking about this here. Yeah. So what I have done here is it is backlit with a torch. So at the back here, out of sight, um, I don't, yeah, you can see my cursor. Out of sight here, I've got my, my torch. And can you see there's, there's, a, there's a dip in the sand here? So the sand is raised up just behind here, completely out of shot, is a tiny little powerful torch, which is pointed into the bottle to light it up. Yeah, I thought it might be, but I just wondered. Yeah. Um, and you can see tons of people have done this before because there's a nice little rubbing off of uh, a little bit of algae off the bottle here. Um, so you can see, you can tell exactly what they've all, all gone and done. Um, there are, the, the one thing about um, Lembe is there is the Lembe rule, which um, all the resorts do um, honour. They don't allow, and someone else here can, can help me out, they don't allow more than 14 divers on one site. Is that correct? Can someone help me out? I think it's 14. No one else knows. Yes. Uh, hi, say it's Dave. Oh, uh, hi, it's, Dave. it's about 12 or 14 or three boats, something like that. Okay, yeah, cool. Um, but they do massively limit the divers, so um, and it's really adhered to, which is which is really good. Uh, it's quite good because if you go go to a site that's full, the skipper would just move on to another site and take you somewhere else. And exactly, and then it's not like they're miles away, so it'll be like a two minute journey, if that, on the yeah. boat. Um, and it, that's the beautiful, that's the really lovely thing about Lembe is you are left to basically just to your resort, just to your your people on one reef. Um, we've got uh, a couple of other questions as well um, from Nick. Um, how much dive photography experience is, is needed? Um, so, I mean, from our perspective, it's important, I would say, to have your own, your own kit. Um, but, Saeed, in terms of the people that you, you know, are happy to welcome on, on, on the trip, um, any thoughts? I love seeing, I love seeing absolute beginners. Because um, I, I have friends that come with me. They are friends. So they're not guests anymore. They're, they're, they're my friends that come out with me. And we've been taking photographs together for a long time. But it's really nice to see people that are brand new um, to the hobby. Um, and that way I can help to kind of mould their, their knowledge. But what is quite important about these two locations is you do have the right kit. Um, so Lembe especially, you need to have kit that will allow you to take photographs of really small things. Um, and I can talk to people through what sort of kit they need for that um, before that before they go on the trip or before they they want to book on the trip. Um, and 
classic um, red angle kit is mu massively preferred. Although you can use a normal setup or a close um, or a close macro setup. Um, for the Tasek week as well. But definitely in Lembe, it's about the kit that you've got. You need to have a strobe, you need to have a macro lens, and ideally a super macro lens with you to take pictures of the tiny things. Because you go down sometimes, and um, for the first time, I've needed glasses. Um, I got my, my newest glasses three weeks away, three weeks ago. So I'm not looking forward to going back to Lembe when the dive guy points out this tiny little bit, bit of belly button fluff moving around, which you then work out is a, a hairy shrimp, which is about two millimeters wide. Um, uh, let's see how we, how we photograph that. But another good thing to take with you, magnifying glass. It's a really, really good accessory to have in your dive. Um, to see these things that the dive guides are looking out for. Super, thanks Saeed. Um, we've got another question from Anne and Trevor, um, which uh, I might be able to answer in part. And can any of the dives be done from the shore? Uh, so Anne and Trevor, um, you have um, um, diving along the shore from Tassik, as we saw on the, on, on the map there in the, in the first week. Um, the majority of diving is, is, is boat diving there. Um, and then as we mentioned at, at Lembe, um, then you've got um, uh, hairball. You've actually got two sites in front of diving to Lembe um, Resort, depending on which way you go with, with slightly different different characters. Um, so there are options from shore. Um, so anything you want to add to that? Um, yeah, the, the, the beauty, the, the one, um, we are restricted a bit with TASIC. So we, we kind of are restricted to the sites that, that we're going to go to and you don't have, if I'm honest, you don't have that much choice, but they are beautiful sites. In Lembe, you basically wake up and they say, where do you want to go? What kind of site? Do you want a muck site? Something that's just pure um, uh, rubbish? Because you are diving through rubbish, okay? Through old boots and shoes and, and bicycles and all that kind of stuff. Do you want a, a um, sandy slope? Sandy slope were very indicative to hairy frogfish and seahorses and that kind of stuff. Or do you want a coral site? Okay, and we can go through coral and we can look um, and we can look through coral for creatures. Or do you want, and because we are that end of Lembe, um, Lembe Straits, do you want a wide angle site? And so we've got sites like Angel's Window, and you can go there and get some be beautiful um, visibility, almost as good as Bunakan sometimes. So you have the real ability to choose your sites. Um, but I think the question was, can you shore dive anywhere? But really, the only shore diving really is at um, dive into Lembe, and then you are restricted to a, a nice little reef they've got um, and the kind of um, mucky um, sand slope of hairball. Excellent. I don't Thanks. know if that answers that. Um, yeah, I think it answers it very well. And we've got a question from uh, Lindsay, um, who I, I think I remember meeting at a dive show many moons ago. Hello, Lindsay. Um, uh, also on House Reef, um, can you go in and out the water um, when you um, want or are you restricted? Um, so um, let's focus on, on, on Lembe primarily because that's where, where those opportunities are. Um, generally, the order of the day would be um, to um, do a couple of boat dives in the morning. Um, there's the option to do boat diving again in the afternoon, and, but you can also go in the house reef when you want. You could probably go in in a dawn dive as well if you wanted to, depending on the, on the schedule of the day. Um, so they're, um, they're, they're pretty flexible on, on where you can dive. And I, you know, I always like house reef dives for, for, the, for the reason, especially with underwater photography, because you, know, you can take your time a little more and it's very much a dive on, on, on your own terms. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I, I thoroughly agree that um, I think we will be actually diving the house reef maybe a bit more than normal guests do because especially if there's some new photographers here because I'll probably want to take you on the house reef um, and we'll go and photograph the same critters because it's very easy to, to walk in off the sand, go to three metres, find an enemy, um, photograph a porcelain crab there, practice with that and then, um, and then come out the water, look at your pictures on the computer and go, do you know what, let's get back in and go and photograph it again. So I think we will have the ability, especially if we take over most of or all of the resort, which is what I'm hoping that will happen, we can um, we can kind of manage the times to ourselves. But as I said, that's not the case at Tassic. 
Super. Thanks, Saeed. Um, and we've got another question from somebody who, whose name hasn't come through, I'm, I'm afraid, but um, uh, it's, um, if you simply want to enjoy the dives and not photograph too much, um, uh, this person is a novice um, with um, next to nothing in photographic kit. Um, so, I mean, the, the focus of this trip is, is, is the photography. Um, but Saeed, I, you know, as far as as far as we're concerned, you know, anybody can come on the trip if they want to, you know, non-diving partners as well, if they if, if they want to, of course. Um, yeah, last last time I went to Tassock, we had a, a, a non-diving partner who had, uh, as I said, some of the best snorkeling she's she's done in a long time. As I said, my partner still thinks the, the islands of Brunaken um, are world class, absolutely the, the best for snorkeling. And that's the gate same for diving. If you just want to go for a dive there, um, I'm sure the resorts will just give you your own guide and you can just go for a dive. Um, don't hold me to that having your own guide, but um, they probably will do. Yeah, uh, and that was from that was from Laura. So thanks, thanks, Laura. We got the name now. Um, uh, we had uh, so we had a quick question from Pat. Um, yes, you joined late. Uh, hi, Pat. Um, yes, it is being recorded. Um, so as long as the technology works, um, you can um, tune in later as well, and we'll share the share the link. Um, uh, and then yeah, a few other nice comments on the on the chat. Um, can you hire personal regard, um, guides? Uh, Lindsay's asking. Yes, subject to them being available. Um, I believe you can in you can in both resorts. Um, and it's something you sort out sort out locally. There, um, they tend to do certainly in Lembe. They tend to do small groups anyway. Um, my my advice for Lembe is you don't need a personal guide. Um, you really don't um, don't. Um, of course, if you want to have one, by all means have one. But they keep the groups really small um, and they work but if you just want to have um a guide and you you can pay for that guide um and just go with the guide itself yeah brilliant Saeed thank you so much um that um was absolutely fascinating um and, and really enjoyable um what um, I would like to do um is to just um share a, a couple more slides of the resorts um, um for those that haven't been before um and obviously provide a few more details on the trip um, so um, if I will endeavour to share my screen now, um, I've got a couple of videos at the end as well. Um, so let's try and get this right. I've got Roger's optimised button there. That's good. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks for that, Roger. Handy tip. OK. OK. So um, Saeed um, mentioned um, about uh, uh, where this is. Um, so we've got a, a very crude map here. Um, so um, this is zoomed out. Um, hopefully everyone can see my screen. Um, so that you can see Monado and Lembe area ringed at the northeastern point of um, Sulawesi um, in central um, Indonesia. Um, if we zoom in a little bit on that area, um, then you can see on this map to the western side, um, you've got um, Bunakan National Park. Um, and then over to the eastern side, you can see uh, Lembe Island there um, and the strait separating um, the mainland, if you will, of Sulawesi from Lembe Island is, is at Lembe Strait, and this is this absolutely extraordinary area for, for, for muck diving. Um, we've seen this slide already um, from Saeed, um, but just to give you a gauge of where Tassik Ria Resort is, um, and I've got a few more photos of it. Um, so um, you can see the resort here, and you can see um, Bunarkin in the, in the background there, um, so it makes quite a nice shot for the perspective. Um, this aerial shot here um, gives a nice view of the, the resort. Um, so they have two types of rooms, um, I've got a couple of pictures of the rooms as well. Um, so around the pool, you've got pool view rooms, um, and then um, you have um, sea view rooms at the front, which are a, a supplement, um, but not much of a supplement. Um, there's 34 rooms in total, 20 of them are, are, are pool view rooms. Um, I, I would, um, just to butt in, I would highly recommend the sea view rooms. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just nice to wake up and, and have, that, have that sort mm. of, that view, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but I mean, it's a lovely resort. It's set in really nice gardens, as, as you mentioned, it's got a nice pool um, and, and nice, nice facilities there as well. Um, these, is the, these are the, the pool view rooms um, from the outside. So they're sort of in a, in a, in a block around the pool. Um, and this is the, uh, the, the inside. Um, so they're perfectly comfortable. They can be double or twin, um, of course. Um, uh, here are the uh, more sea view rooms. Um, so they're detached bungalows. They're a little bit larger. Um, 
And um, here you've got a shot um, of the, the inside of one of those rooms. Um, they've even got uh, one or two grand sea view rooms as well, um, which are on a, on a similar theme, but a, a little bit larger. Um, so these ones are, are more luxurious um, for those who want to sort of uh, splurge a little bit more on the, on the trip. Um, this is the dive centre. Um, obviously, you know, some of you might may well know Tassic um, Rear Resort and Tassic Divers because they've been to many dive shows in the UK. Um, we picked the resort for this trip um, because it's a good value resort, but it's also very well set up for divers um, and um, underwater photographers as well. Really well organised, um, really good facilities as well um, to cater for, for, for everyone. Um, uh, this is a couple of the larger boats that we mentioned. Um, so this is Voyager and uh, Aquatica, um, and then they have um, some smaller, faster boats as well. Um, so this is um, Anne-Marie, I believe, is one of their smaller boats. Um, so, you know, depending on the, on the dynamics, um, you'll be using some of those boats for your week in um, Bunaken at the start of the trip. Um, and here we have uh, one of the boats at Dunarkin, which is a, a ra rather lovely shot, certainly somewhere I think we're <laughs> we'd all quite like to be at the, at the moment. Um, so um, uh, obviously we can chat to any of you individually that want to go into more detail. We've got, you know, a detailed itinerary we can send everyone, but I just wanted to give people a, a little flavour on, on this call. Um, so if we move over to Lembe, so um, Saeed's already covered that it's um, the resort is, is at the northern end of the strait in, in really quite an, an enviable location. Um, um, and we've got here sort of a, a, a nice aerial view of the resort. Um, it's a smaller resort. So they um, have a recently built long house, which has three rooms, which is the, the entry level. Um, and then they have nine um, sea view rooms, which you can see in, in, in this shot. Um, which again are rather lovely. Um, I've got some shots of those in a, in a, in a moment. Um, these are the resort owners. So we've got uh, Steve and Miranda. Um, Steve, who is something of a character, um, who um, you may again have met at dive shows in the, in the UK. Um, and then his Dutch uh, wife, Miranda, uh, who uh, helps to uh, keep Steve in, in check. Um, Steve is actually a fabulous photographer in, in his own right. So he's, he's, he's really an expert and they're, they're fabulously welcoming hosts. Um, so um, you can see the sea view bungalows here. So we've got nine of those and I've got a few shots, both of the long house, um, which they've built recently towards the back and those sea view rooms. Um, this is the long house. Um, so they've got three rooms there um, and um, it's done very, very nicely. Again, a little bit like Tassic, these ones aren't detached, um, but you've got plenty of space um, and they're very well, very well kitted out rooms. So they're perfectly, perfectly nice rooms. Um, here you've got the, the sea view rooms, um, which have their own, own sort of veranda and, and, and more privacy. And um, one of the things that I absolutely loved about this resort is the onsen spa, um, which you can see um, at, on the on the, the left hand side of the of, of the shot. Um, so the resort will fill that for the end of your diving in the day. It's lovely and warm and just the most delightful place to enjoy at, at the end of a dive. Um, these are the rooms again, um, so, you know, very nice. Uh, you've got all the facilities uh, you, you need, you know, nice bathroom, air conditioning. Um, you've got a TV as well, mini fridge. Um, beds are very, very comfortable. Um, so, uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're very nice rooms. Um, that's the, the onsen spa and somebody uh, enjoying it as I did, <laughs> did many times on my trip. Um, Here's the restaurant. Again, so of Seed covered this a little bit, but there's lots and lots of space um, to enjoy and, and relax and, and spread out. Um, we've got these dive boats that are just in front of, of the resort. Um, so they're quite small. Um, so depending on the numbers we have on the trip, you know, we may need a, a, a couple of dive boats to take people out, um, but it's good to have that sort of, th those options, um, you know, to have a few boats and, and smaller numbers on, on each yeah. boat. Um, the dive center or the, the equipment area is very uh, well organized. You get your own box and your own area. So it's all very impressive. Um, and um, we've got a camera room. Steve tells me it's the largest camera room in Lembe. Um, I've not measured them all, um, so I don't know for sure, but <laughs> it's certainly very, very spacious. Um, and, you know, he, as I say, he's a, he's a very accomplished photographer. So it gives you, you know, plenty of space that you need for the kit, um, plenty of, you know, dedicated rig, rinse tanks for your, your, your camera gear as, as well. Um, and a lovely area to, to relax in the evening. Um, 
and well, as Saeed has already mentioned, have a have a lo local bintang beer at the at the end of the day, as well. Um, so, um, if I give a few more details on the uh, the trip itself, um, so the dates for the trip are from the twenty sixth of June. Um, as Saeed mentioned, um, we've got the first week in Tasik Ria, so that's from the 26th of June to the 3rd of July, uh, I believe, and then um, dive into Lembe for the following week from the 3rd to the 10th of July. Um, it's designed as a very flexible trip, so it's not a, a group trip per se in that you have to come for that length of time. Um, you um, can go for the entire time, and I imagine a lot of people would choose to do that. Um, for the full 14 nights and that's from 2065 per person based on twin share um, we've also priced up um, if you did five nights at each resort um, um, which would be from 1475 um, in each of those cases um, flights are, are additional um, which we will look at um, sort of um, as and when we get through you know the, the current lockdown restrictions and, and we can plan more clearly a, a ahead um, you don't have to do either of those. We're anticipating that people will want to get the wide angle of Bunaken and also uh, uh, the macro of Lembe. But if you want to, as Saeed mentioned, you can just do a week at one resort or just do a week at the other. So just speak to us. Um, those prices include the resort accommodation, um, two dives a day. But as we've discussed, more dives are definitely possible. We just want to make it accessible for, for everybody budget wise. Um, but you can absolutely do more. Um, all your meals, the tanks and weights, the airport transfers, um, and of course, uh, the services of Saeed Rashid, which is limited primarily to photography, despite the, the, the curious wording. <laughs> uh, unless you want to do additional services, I don't know. I'll, 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 I'll leave that up to you. Within reason, I'll do anything. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll <laughs> myself out there. Um, so actually, actually, not within reason. Within out of reason, I'll, I'll do anything. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so um, obviously this, this trip's planned for June and July. Um, we are in a position here, of course, where we're in a, in a lockdown. Um, we've got a good vaccine rollout here. There's a good vaccine rollout in Indonesia. So we're confident um, that this trip will, will, will go ahead. Um, but we absolutely don't know the future. Um, we know that uh, everybody is, you know, ourselves included, uh, desperate to get diving and to have things to look forward to. Um, so in terms of booking onto the trip, um, we've made it as flexible as we possibly can be. Um, so we're only asking for £100 per person at this point in time in order effectively to hold your place on, on the trip, to secure your place on the trip. Um, that's a flexible deposit. So um, as and when we get to the point in time where restrictions are lifted, and um, um, we're looking at you know planning this trip with a bit more certainty and looking at flights for those people that want us to book flights, um, we will have a discussion with everybody that's booked on. Um, and if you do not wish to go or you have specific circumstances with regard to, you know, COVID or your circumstances, um, then that's no problem. You can have your deposit back. Um, it's entirely flexible. So we want to make it so that it's as easy um, as possible for everybody and as simple as possible, given the uncertainties we've got at, at this time. Um, the other thing we'd like to do for everybody that's made the effort to um, uh, enjoy this Zoom call um, is to um, offer you um, a £50 off per booking on the trip, um, whichever version you decide to book, as a thank you for joining us on the, on, on the call. Um, I genuinely hope you found it, um, you found it useful um, and interesting. Um, and of course, we'd absolutely love to welcome you on the, on, on the trip. I think for anybody that is looking to improve their photography or wants a trip that is dedicated to them as a photographer um, then um, it's absolutely perfect and of course you know Seed will um, you know gladly um, work with you on your photos and, 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 and on techniques to make sure you get the absolute most from the trip. Um, so um, I think that's it from um, uh, from from us oh, we've got one or two more one or two more questions uh, which I can cover. Um, so um, is there a single uh, a single supplement? Um, I did write a few things down. So um, it's, it's actually very, very good value. Um, so um, obviously it depends on the on, on the length of the trip that you were that you were going for. Um, but um, it's around 225 pounds single supplement. So it's not um, it's not a great deal of money. 
Um, I also trotted up, you know, if people wanted to see view uh, at both resorts because it's based on the entry level room, um, then that works out as £300 per person um, on a twin share basis. Um, uh, we've got a question about snorkeling and dive partners. Yeah, I think we covered that. They're more than welcome to come. Um, in terms of flights, um, uh, we can give an idea. We'd expect flights for um, that region probably to be um, around 800, 900 pounds. Um, there's options via Singapore and Jakarta. Um, Singapore is sometimes the easier one, um, but there's a lot of upheaval of flights at the moment, of course, because of because of COVID. Um, so we'll discuss that with everybody, sort of, you know, as and when um, we're a little nearer the time and, and we're out of this this, this period at the moment. Um, um, and don't, don't forget, Phil, but every, oh, one oh, minute, oh, just, uh, your beer, your bintang. Yeah, so every, everyone that's on the call tonight um, that books, uh, I will buy you your first bintang. Now that is a rare offer. That is a very, <laughs> yeah. very rare offer. Yeah. And the call is recorded, so you can, uh, you, you can hold say to that. So while you're, while you, when you've booked and you're sitting there drinking your bintang and someone else asks you, well, why did Saeed buy you that? Well, you didn't go to his talk. Yeah. And that's, what, so that's where it lies. Simple. I'll, I'll leave you to manage that one. <laughs> 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 um, uh, everybody, so that, that, that's the end. I hope that was interesting and useful for, for everybody. Um, so um, we will say goodbye now. Um, I've got a couple of other um, just sort of promotional videos from the resort. Um, which are a bit more generic, just to sort of play people out for people that want a bit more of a flavour. Um, but we'll say goodbye now, um, and um, we will follow up with everyone after this talk, um, and we look forward to um, hopefully welcoming, welcoming um, many of you um, on uh, on this trip. All right. Thank um, you so much, everybody. I'll just, I'll just say... I just have a quick goodbye. Um, don't forget, if you want to, if you want any more information about the trip, um, please just message me. Well, information about the trip, talk to Phil. Information about the photography and the diving, um, just find me on social media. Um, I am on every single social media all the time, constantly. Um, so you can you can see me there. Um, so hopefully, I'll get to see some of you guys underwater. Stay safe, That's everyone. Good. It'll be lovely. Super. Thank you, everybody. You take care. Bye bye. <laughs>
All right, that's it. Lovely to see everybody. Thank you so much for coming. Have a good evening.